Hey guys, welcome to another Zero tutorial. My name is Samuel Burmeister and I'm the owner here at Tollbooks. Today I'm going to take you through payroll settings in Zero, which is pretty straightforward, but it's good to have a guide through the process. So to begin with, it's important to know the areas that we use for payroll in Zero. So the most obvious one up the top, we have the payroll tab with our different areas. Now, this is mainly for processing payroll. Before you do so, or if any configuration under settings, you can find payroll settings. So this is what we're going to click on. So here we are in the payroll settings section in Zero. Once you're in the payroll settings section, you'll see tabs along the top. So starting with organization settings, we have our linked accounts for PAYG, wages, expense, payable, superannuation liability and expense, along with the linked bank account for processing payroll. It's important you choose the right bank account here because this is used for ABA files you upload to make batch payments for employees as well if you choose to do so. So come in here and configure those accounts. Zero uses wages payable as the default wages payable account, which means once a pay run is processed, for example, you process a pay run for $1,000, that is now needing to be paid to employees. $1,000 will be credited to the wages payable account. And when you pay that $1,000 out of the bank account, which should be this one here, you can allocate it to the wages payable account. And that'll bring the balance down to zero, which shows you you've paid everything owing from that pay run. Below that section, we have payroll tracking. Tracking categories can be turned on under general settings and tracking um, for further breakdown for expense analysis and timesheet categories as well. We've then got our pay slip options. So you can show annual salary and employment basis on the employee pay slips. And you can upload a logo here as well if you'd like to display on pay slips just to give it that professional touch. Once you're done, make sure you click save in the bottom right hand corner and you'll get the banner along the top. Then we can move on to calendars. Pay calendars are used in Zero to set up the different um, wage frequencies. So if you have weekly employees, fortnightly, monthly, etc., this is where you set up those calendars. So you can see here we've got a few fortnightly for specific employees, monthly, weekly casuals and a weekly calendar. To add a new pay calendar, you click this button on the right hand side, choose the frequency, give it a name, a start date. We'll just choose Monday and the first payment date for that pay run as well. Once you're done with that, you can simply click add and it will appear here on this list. Next up, we have the Holidays tab. So Holidays are pretty straightforward. Zero uses its own um, Holidays linked in from basically the different state governments to show when there's a public holiday at play. So if you have an employee who wants to take a week's leave, if they have a holiday, uh, public holiday during that time and you've linked the Holidays for their state under the employee card. So under payroll and employees, you can choose a holiday category. So if they're a Victorian employee, you choose Victoria, for example. And that means when they take the week's leave, it won't include the public holiday in that leave balance because they would have got that time off, for example. So very handy. Make sure you have added your holidays to each employee for the correct state. Next step is pay items. So this is our main one here. And what you'll see is the different categories. So we've got earnings for our general wage categories. You can see here we've got overtime, ordinary hours and allowances. You've got a deductions tab uh, for things like union fees, child support, um, FBT, etc. Reimbursements tab and leave. So you can set up the different types here. Zero will default with all the main categories for you, so you don't have to worry too much. 
If you want to add one, for example, let's say another earnings category and we didn't have overtime, you can click add up the top right, choose overtime earnings, give it a name. So overtime and we'll just say example. The display name will be overtime for the pay slips. Rate type will do a multiple of the employee's ordinary earnings rate and 1.5. So zero will automatically calculate 1.5 times the ordinary rate that you've set for the employee for this overtime earnings. Expense account, we're just going to put it in the wages and salaries expense account and exempt it from super. Once I add that, you'll see our special overtime for the example we've added down the bottom. And it's as simple as that. The last tab you need to know about is the superannuation tab which contains all the superannuation funds for each employee that you have added in. If you need to add a new one, simply click add superannuation fund, type in the name and put in the employer number where necessary. Um, you've got the different types up the top here too, whether it's regulated or self-managed super fund. And once that's added, under the payroll section, when you're entering in employees, which we'll cover in the next video, you have these options to choose from. So make sure you've added everything you need to in the payroll settings in Xero before you proceed to set up employees. And you're good to go. If you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments below or send me an email. Thanks, guys.